Hello everybody and welcome to the second round of the World Cup. Uh, match between Andri and Yago. Yago is the Wood Elves, he won the toss and chose to receive and then roll an instant double skulls. Um, he maybe could have actually not re-rolled it, but the problem is if he doesn't, he probably he probably doesn't get fouled actually because the linemen are on the line. But you know it's an arm roll and you tackle down, so you really don't want it to happen. So I don't blame him for re-rolling it. Um, Yagol doesn't play champs ladder. He qualified from the DBBC and is German. <laughs> And he's playing Andre, who's Spanish, who qualified from Pietro Di Minotauro, um, who has a 68% win rate on Champs Ladder. Um, so yeah, interesting, interesting matchup. It's a, it's a tough matchup for the Wood Elves, the other humans. They've got two mighty blow guys on the tackle. Um, Andre used his double on guard for the catcher, which is what I like. Uh, Iago used his double for dodge and the catcher but he's used a normal on sidestep for this guy I really don't like this I'd have gone block for sure if I was going to put a skill on the catcher um, and then you could stack the blodge guard um, of course sidestep makes his one turn slightly better he also left his dancer exposed here which was I mean everyone's going to take easiest decision of Andre's life to, to hit him with mighty blow tackle wasn't it um, but yeah, it's like uh, I really don't like when 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 skills are so valuable. When you've only got four to put one on sidestep, um, I don't really like that. And guard's fine on the catcher, but I wouldn't want guard on an unprotected catcher. Um, different on humans because you've kind of no choice. But you could have had the choice, like you know, like how I did. Um, I did go block on the catcher, which I regretted, and wish I'd gone wrestle on alignment. But you know. If that's your plan to go guard, vastly prefer block on a catcher. First turn root, absolutely classic. Absolute classic root there. Um, now, yeah, this is this is a thing coming in here. What you could have done is you could have based the catcher, put another guy in here, and two dice the ogre. You know, obviously he wants to get him out of the tree, but he goes for the one dice after using his reroll turn one and uh, now he's down to one he would have been down to zero if it wasn't for the uh, the cheering fans because he's got the apple um, andrew has gone three one in reserve so yeah it's it's bad dice for sure rolling the double skull but the one dice was a bit greedy wasn't it making that a one dice af after using his reroll in the first turn i think that was a mistake really just making it a one dice here. um of course, still unlucky to roll the one in six, but really could have just made it two dice, and uh, especially after using his reroll, turn one. So, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, humans are pretty, pretty scary. You know, they've got they've got the sure hands, and they've got all the guards, so it's not easy to get you strips in. You know, like strips shouldn't be the primary tactic for what else. To be fair. Like, people are terrified of the leap strip, but it, it's not plan A. You know, plan A is just to play good solid blood ball, and then if that fails, <laughs> you always have a 3 plus 3 plus to get the ball, basically, or a 3 plus 2 plus to get the ball, which is really insane, isn't it? Whereas in this match, he's only got a 3 plus 4 plus to get the ball at any point, but doesn't have that because of the guards. Um, you know, Andre presumably on his off offense will keep guard near the ball at all times. Um, I like the blitz up here to try and get down this this area. Obviously, it means dodging with the ball carrier, but you know, so what? <laughs> You've got to, haven't you? You've got to sometimes. It's only punish one in thirty-six. I didn't really like this block. I would have blocked him this way to get him away, and then try to dodge this guy away or block with. I didn't like getting the uh, guard jammed in there. But this lets him get further forward, doesn't it? So it's, it's not bad, just different. This one can dodge out, but he can't go anywhere. Like on a 2 plus, he can dodge out, but he can't go anywhere without more dice. 
That's fair enough. But yeah, I don't know. I think if he blocked away and maybe he's not got us to fall forward, but then. You know, there's pros and cons to everything, isn't there? But getting this far forward does leave him. Uh, does leave Andre some dice to get to get two dice on the ball here. Whereas. But then this not being an AV break, you know, this guy was dangerous, so. I can absolutely. You know, this is really. You'd want the, the ball carrier here and stuff around him, but. Just couldn't do it because of this guy being, being in the way. So this is this is again good from Andre. Andre is one of the people who's uh, impressed me the most, to be honest, in this tournament. And he you know, does all the safe moves first, and he goes for the crazy, the crazy stuff afterwards, which is in this case some dodges and GFIs. So like one dodge and three GFIs is, is really crazy. Um, and he gets the two dice, but doesn't get the power. Attack on my elbow, got to feel bad about that. Um, yeah, interesting. I'll, I'll pause it here because there's a... after it says turn four. I think what, what Yago should have done here um, and what I would have tried would have been blitz from this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hits him with a guard and then he can block him, surf him and then he can move this guy around and then blitz out and what have you and kind of have a team here. I think that was the play. Surfing a guard's really good. Um, I think that was what he... What he Maybe what he should have done. He does roll a double skull though, so that doesn't help. Now he's out of rerolls on turn four, and you know the double the double skulls he couldn't have helped. Um, but by the same token, he absolutely could have helped the one dice on the ogre. Relying on one dices without. Without re-roll is, is horrible, but what else can you do? So Yeah, you know, the tree room was unlucky as well, so he's definitely had his share of bad luck here. So this looks like he can get the guard in, doesn't it? Yeah, pretty easy to get the guard in and another two dice on the ball. With tackle and mighty blow. So <laughs> rolling a bit crap here, but he gives himself all the ways to get the extra blocks. Gets the K out of it and gets his guard freed up. So worked out pretty well in the end. Kaz, huge Kaz. I thought this was game over at the time because I'd missed the fact that Yago had got an extra reroll. So I thought he'd gone two rerolls, no apple. Um, but he did actually have the apple. So I mean, the apple, great value this game. Humans pick up the ball and run away. With a, with a double GFI as well. Wow. Wow. Good old humans here. Who knew? Who knew they were actually good? Well, everybody when they saw the rules. But um, it's still funny that they're, they're kind of quite good in this format. And really, that's the thing, isn't it? In normal NAF style tournaments, you don't get a stack skills. And everybody being able to get mighty blow tackle does make wood elves a bit dodgy. Facing the ball with dodge and sidestep and a guard, that's pretty good, isn't it? So, so you know, the sidestep looks pretty good here.
three players removed for the woodies. Well, oh, maybe a misplay there. Just standing this guy up. I mean, it was a safe move first, but... You know, maybe he could have uh, blocked this one away and then blitzed the dancer with my Epo tackle. There's no, there's no chain or anything, is there? No. Just goes for the dodge, straight up dodge. And one in nines it, showing why humans maybe aren't so good. So now, now, now he goes really, really probably kicking himself that he doesn't have any rerolls. Um, the, obviously the dance is the easiest guy to get out because it's uh, one in nine on the first dodge. So, and along the catcher and then blocks are all right. Um, and yeah, now sudden, all of a sudden, the elves have nearly got it in a cage, haven't they? And he goes for the one in six dodge. So yeah, that was in a kind of irrelevant position as well. So I think the play was definitely to go for the the dancer, three plus two plus. Who just blitz him? Yeah, he hadn't blitz him. He blitz him and then go back here, and then he would have had the ball in a cage and way away from the tackler. So maybe that would have been right. But as it is, he gets another 2D on the ball with block. And here, sidestep stops him getting pushed into an additional block. So sidestep, pretty good. Pretty good being able to sidestep to there. But still, I, you know, blocks. Blocks better when you're getting punched, isn't it? Got to move this guy over out here now. Yeah, there's a there's a guard, and this guy isn't there, so dancer can come and blitz him away. Now the unfortunate thing is it's turn seven. The catcher does just need to be here to be in scoring range, so maybe there's some kind of you know, Dancer could go there and could try and make some kind of formation with dodge outs to protect him. But instead, he just fully potatoes. Um, and then GFIs to base the tackler. But, I don't know, I, I kind of don't like it, the fact that you can three dice you there. Um, I would have been tempted to try and make some kind of formation two squares in, you know, leaving three GFIs. I know it's not good, but getting three dice with block of the reroll is pretty bad. Also, just quietly, loads of elves are getting knocked out. <laughs> Which, you know, it doesn't happen to ha it doesn't have to happen, does it? You know, like people people are always quick to say woodies are lucky when nobody gets uh, knocked out, but they don't have to get knocked out. But it's still a bit unlucky to take that many cases. And that's the thing, lack of block costs him there, doesn't it? Who knows what would have happened if he'd had block. And of course, basing the tackle mighty blow results in ultimate punishment. <laughs> Cal's guard and catcher. He can still score with this catcher. One, two, three, four, five, GFI, GFI, GFI. So there's still like it's not even it's not even a ridiculous chance to score here. Now obviously there's certainly an argument for trying to stop the human score. A really strong argument for just trying to stop the human score. So that is probably the better play. Technically. Technically this is probably the right play. But I would have been tempted just to go for it, you know, do all the dodges, get in the end zone, do the dodges, pick up, dodge through and pass it to him because, you know, why not? <laughs> he does fail the pick up and give it to the blitzer though, so, yeah, this this touchdown, you know, I, I do think Yagul did exactly the right thing of trying to stop, stop being scored on. Absolutely the right play. 
And maybe I would have done that as well, actually, but... It wasn't so... If it had a re-roll, the score would have been like 24%, which is crazy. Crazy considering all the rolls and how impossible it would be for a human team to even consider attempting it. It wouldn't have even been that bad with a re-roll. But without the re-roll, absolutely the correct call. And even with the re-roll, you could say it was the right, right call to just go for stopping the score. And he's ended up with just a handoff and a GFI to score. One GFI with a re-roll. Oh. <laughs> he makes it unbelievable here. Yeah. So yeah, now now the Kaz and KOs that weren't really worth mentioning so much. Because all the other stuff is happening now, it looks horrible for Yagul, doesn't it? Seven players, um, a ball carrier with sure hands, guard for the cage for him. You know, almost no way back in for him here. And this is this is the thing about about Wood Elves, isn't it? And it it's a source of fierce debate because some people are like, this is more likely to happen when you use Wood Elves. Yeah, there's games where the Wood Elves only take one Kaz or one KO or something, and then, you know, just because it's more likely for this to happen to Wood Elves, and this, this kind of game has happened to Dwarves, hasn't it, in the World Cup? Dwarves that took five Kaz and stuff. So, I'm really not sure how dicey Wood Elves are, to be honest. Let's put his uh, throw too far back here, hasn't he? Surprisingly far back there. So he can't move out of the tree. I might have put the tree here. Um, yeah, so he can't actually reach with the, with the shoe of hands guy. Which is a bit problematic. So now it's essential that you like screws the ball as well as caging it to make sure Yago yeah, can't get the leap in. For the strip because this is this is his chance isn't it really makes the pick up oh, yes we can get quite far away actually And the fact he's got the ogre here makes it hard to split the team in two. So he's really just got to do with dodges. And he gets that dodge away. So a couple of big dodges away actually. For Andre. But if Yago can get his four elves. <laughs> here. He's got something going for him hasn't he? And yeah maybe that was a bit of a mistake moving that last guy there. Because that did give him the hole to get get some pressure on. I think I would have wanted to keep him more central just so he can reach wherever he goes. The last guy to here to kind of make screen them off. I think yeah, I think I'd have put him there. I think basing's fine. But I think I'd have put him there to screen off the dancers, but then that makes it kind of too easy to run up this way, so certainly. Certainly not wrong. Huge double skull there. But, well, potentially. <laughs> Frustrating rather than huge, isn't it? It's the sort of thing you're like, oh, it has to be the first roll that I, that I mess up. But really, that's the only roll he needs to get the ball safe. Or pretty much as safe as he needs it to be anyway. Might have been tempting just to try and circle the dancer actually here, yeah. get an assist there, and then blitz here, and then surf out the dancer. That might have been, that might have been a good play. Don't know how feasible protecting the ball was from the other dancer then. 
Because he, he did need a few players from up here, didn't he, to come down and defend. But he got the team back together-ish. I mean, he should be able to with with the Woodies having no players at all, hardly. <laughs> So he's got an uphill strip here, hasn't he? I, I would have moved the tree last, actually. I would have gone for the, the double G if I last with the tree, I think. <laughs> I've done it before. I've done the odd I've done the odd double G if I in my life with my tree and uh, blitz with him sometimes as well. But yeah, got to just leap in and uphill here, hasn't he? It's not even bad odds, really. And he gets the push. Five plus. If only he hadn't needed to re-roll the leap, this would have been pretty good odds of picking it up. But um, as it is, he fails the five plus. The tackler is free. And he's blitzing with attack. I mean, this is so many dice here, isn't it? But Bound to get him down, really. Could even go for a foul, seeing as the uh, strip is so critical, isn't it? <laughs> Three dice, get a push. Standard. Can't get it with the thrower again. Could have done a power thing, but. Without the power, he can't risk it, can he? Mm, catches. Catches okay, but again, it gives a chance of a one dice, doesn't it? Maybe he might have tried to get it with a blitzer there. Of course, had to foul, had to foul the strip ball. Dancer. Yeah, there was. I mean, whichever way he does it, there's two dice in the ball there, where he ended up. I think maybe it's a bit of a mistake there from Andrew. Could have been one square behind Granny. And then it would have been alright. But he's left. He's left the easy two dice with Tackle. Now, obviously, there's not a huge recovery here. He does use his last re roll, and maybe. Maybe he could have hung on to it there, maybe not. You know, maybe he felt that was his last chance. But the, the really, the recovery wasn't great, was it? Especially after spending the reroll. Um, it does feel pretty grim for the Woodies here. So, even with seven players. Like, seven players... Woodies should be able to do something with seven players. Um, but it just... Just feels like it slipped away, I think. Especially now with no re-rolls. So he wants to put the dancer, which fair enough, you can't blame him for. I mean, I think the better positional blitz would have been gone for this line off, but fair enough wanting to hit the dancer. Also, this gives him another assist for the foul, which has to come, really, when you don't have the ball in a shoe hands in. I just going for the hand after the sure hands go. Now the foul. Oh yeah, sorry, not now the foul, yeah. Block him first, get him away. So you got another two more assists. Plus three foul. Huge. That's probably all she wrote now, then, isn't it? 1 0 up as well. I mean, best case scenario, Iago gets to overtime and he's he's down so many players. I mean, they could get back, but yeah, looking bad. He 
is the this is the thing, you know, Andre's gonna play it totally safe, isn't he? Do all the right things. Just keep the ball fully protected, guard both sides. Can only uphill him. It's uh yeah, it's looking grim. Very grim for the woodies. I think uh, there are maybe some things Yago could have done differently. I mean, but obviously, particularly the the block on the ogre was was huge to do a one dicer after uh, after using his reroll on the first turn. I think that was like obviously he couldn't help the two double skulls that he rolled. Um, that just sucks, in it. I mean, there was a, he had a lot of bad dice. I mean, loads of players removed. Um, but overall, I mean. Andre's had the bare dice, but he has he has used them well, hasn't he? Um, somebody else may not have done, but he definitely has done everything right, I think, and does deserve it. It should be a win here. Is this the last roll of the dice now? A leap in the uphill. Only a push. If only War Dancers were strength seven, I think you could have got the ball then. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, nearly everyone. Well, everyone will be on the floor after this turn. Trees rooted, so not good. I like the not following and then going where where he was because you might as well keep your options open to see if you cast him, you know, rather than rather than uh, following. You know, if if you if you cast him, you know, just sit, have a look and then think. Right, what am I going to do now? You know, you, you, rather than just using the fifteen seconds. Sorry about that. That didn't make any sense. See if you cast him after you've pushed him. But you know, if you've got movement left after blitzing. Then I like the not following, and then using the extra square to go where you would have been if you'd followed, because you're not losing anything by, you know, giving yourself more time to think. Are you? That makes more sense. <laughs> See if you cast somebody on a push. <laughs> Imagine if you could cast someone on a push. Wow. Yeah, obviously foul. Foul the dancers. Um, obviously doesn't care if gets sent off right now. Gets the cars, and with that. Dies Yago's final hopes, I think. Yago will have the chance of the one turn, but he's got eight players for it max, so it's not going to be easy to get the pushers. Oh, plus he'll be 2 0 down. <laughs> yeah, plus he'll be 2 0 down. So, yeah, it's all over, pretty much. One, two, three, four, GFI, GFI. So he could he could base with this lineman. But that's all he can do. So he will he'll foul him with all the assists and then it's absolutely hundred percent. Um Maybe maybe a goal could get a riot and then one turn. And then have a turn left and have a blitz. So yeah, he has got he has got the slightest chance. It's possible. You're telling me there's a chance. Um, you know, and he's he's got to sit up for the one turn and then see if there's a riot and then if he gets it and then gets a blitz. You know, I think you've got to give yourself the chance. Now, obviously, it's easy to say that for somebody who hasn't been annoyed at rolling a bunch of double spills but you know if he was an emotionless robot <laughs> he'd definitely be thinking right I just need to get a ride get a one turn and then get a blitz <laughs> so yeah, 
2-0. Almost certainly in the bag for Henry. Humans. Humans massacring the Wood Elves. Not really what I wanted to see before my match. <laughs> but there you go. Not unexpected. Really, humans did make Wood Elves a bit of a poor choice in this format. Humans are very strong and would always be, you know, prevalent. So. So he's got a bit of a anti one turn setup. You know, which is fair enough, I mean, it's right. There is a chance of a riot and a one turner and then a blitz. So he, he did right to set up against the one turner, you know, like obviously in Champ's Ladder, you probably would just backline it because who cares? Just want to protect players. But there's no reason to protect players in this, so set up properly. Ooh, quick snap. I don't think it was possible without the quick snap, but the quick snap makes it very possible, doesn't it, to get the one turner. Three, four, yeah, I don't think it was possible without the quick snap, to be honest. Might have been. He's gonna go for it anyway. Looks better to lose 2-1 than 2-0, I guess. Can run around there and get another push. it it's all it really the fat lady has sung two av breaks a 16 um terrifying performance from humans there and you know thoroughly deserved i mean yago yeah, had some bad dice no doubt about it um i mean just looking at the blocks it was 31 blocks in 16 av breaks is ridiculous i know he fouled a few times um but that's still a ridiculous ratio um but you know that, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes isn't it with woodies um and you know he, he didn't do anything wrong at all Andre. so congrats to him commiserations to Yago. thanks for watching if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic